Today we're going to complete a basic app using MIT App Inventor known as the Magic 8-Ball. Now it is said that the Magic 8-Ball can predict the future. While this introductory module will help guide you through building a Magic 8-Ball app with MIT App Inventor. When activated, your 8-Ball will deliver one of its classics predictions. You will learn how to create your predictions and incorporate them into your app. Our learning goals for this activity is to learn how to navigate the MIT App Inventor environment. This includes the designer, block editor, as well as the MIT App Companion. We will learn how to correctly use the following App Inventor components, such as the accelerometer sensor, the button, as well as a player. We will correctly use the following App Inventor concepts, making and using a list, as well as responding to an event. Now, the materials that are needed for this is our MIT App Inventor website. We will also need the Magic 8-Ball AIA file, which will be downloaded from this section. The MIT App Companion from our Google Play Store, as well as this video lesson tutorial. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we could import that AIA file into our MIT App Inventor. In order to begin with your Magic 8-Ball app, we're going to need to log into our MIT App Inventor. Now we can get to our MIT App Inventor by clicking on the link in your Schoology or simply typing in ai2.appinventor.mit.edu into your URL. If you click on the link, it will bring you to a sign-on page where you will need to input your school email address. Once you click on your school email address, it should bring you to your MIT App Inventor. If for some reason it does not bring you to a list of projects, you can simply go ahead and click on the Create Apps button up at the top. This will also bring you into the MIT App Inventor. Now, once you are into your MIT App Inventor, what we'll need to do is to import the AIA file that has been given to you. From your Schoology page, if we scroll down to the bottom, we will see that there is this magic 8ball.aia file. You will need to go ahead and click on Download in order to download that into your files library. Once it's downloaded into the files library, we can go back to our MIT App Inventor, and from here we're going to need to go to Projects. From Projects, we're going to select the Import Project AIA from My Computer. Make sure you select the one that says From My Computer and not From a Repository. Once you click on that, it's going to ask you to choose a file. Select the Choose File option. From here, your file library will open up, you can simply go to Recent in order to locate the Magic 8-Ball AIA file. Now, once your files open up, you will need to select that AIA file. Simply click on that Magic 8-Ball AIA and select Open from the bottom part of the screen. From here, you will see that the file has now been uploaded and we will need to select OK. Now, here it will take a minute or two to import the file into your MIT App Inventor. Once you see the name appear, Give it a few seconds and it should open up your designer view in MIT App Inventor. Now that you have the app imported in, it's time to begin designing the user interface. For our next step, we're going to need to go ahead and bring in our first component, which is known as a button. We're going to be bringing our button in from our palette and applying it to our canvas. Now, once we have that button placed on our canvas, there are a few properties that we're going to be changing. We're going to be changing the image to represent the magic 8-ball. We will also be changing the height to 70% of that image, and the width will be set to fill parent, which means it will take up the entire width of that page. We can then go ahead and change the text by replacing it so that there is no text being displayed across the screen. So let's go ahead and take a look at our MIT App Inventor and how we would bring this component in. Now, once you're in your MIT App Inventor, there's four windows that we're going to be looking at in order to navigate around this environment. The first is going to be your palette window, and here's where you can find all of the components that are going to be needed to incorporate into your design. The second window is the viewer. This is where we can see those components and what they would look like on our tablet or phone. The third window is the components. As you bring a component into your tablet, you will notice that the components will start to accumulate in that window. The last but not least is our properties viewer. In that properties window, we have the ability to change specific properties or features for each of the components that we bring in. So let's go ahead and take a look at how these would work when bringing in specific components. 
The first component we're going to bring in is this button. And we're going to do that by clicking and dragging the button onto our canvas. So we are basically taking our button from our palette window and dragging it into the viewer. Here you'll see that we have this text for button one, and it also appears in the components viewer where we can see that button one is now part of our app. For the properties, since we have button one selected, we can change specific properties. One of the properties we're going to change is this image. We're going to change it from none by clicking on it and changing it over to magic eight ball JPEG. Go ahead and select OK. By doing that, it will replace the rectangle with a preset image of the Magic 8-Ball. The next thing we'll need to do is resize this so it fits on our screen. We're going to click on Height and change it from Automatic over to 70%, select OK. For the width, we'll go ahead and select Fill Parent and select OK. Fill Parent basically means that it's going to take up the entire width of your screen. The last thing we need to do is remove this text that's appearing over our image. We can do that by selecting the text property and deleting the text that's currently in there. Once you click in the screen, that text will disappear. Now that you have your button incorporated into your design, it's ready to move on to the next step. For step seven, we're gonna be using a vertical arrangement and placing it underneath the button on our canvas. Vertical arrangements allow us to stack components on top of one another. So we're gonna be using this vertical arrangement and when we place it into that canvas, we're gonna to need to change the height and width to fill the parent of our screen. So let's take a look at our MIT App Inventor and how we would do this. For your vertical arrangement, we're gonna to need to go to our palette window. And in our palette window, we're in the user interface drawer at this time we're gonna to need to go down and find the layout drawer. Once you click on the layout drawer, you'll notice that you have five options. You have a horizontal arrangement, a horizontal scroll arrangement, table arrangement, vertical arrangement, as well as a vertical scroll arrangement. We're gonna be using this vertical arrangement. So we're gonna go ahead and drag that vertical arrangement in and make sure it goes beneath the button that has been added. Here you will see that our vertical arrangement is now added to our components window. In our properties window, we're gonna to need to change the height to fill parent, as well as the width to fill parent. Now that we've gone ahead and created a vertical arrangement, we can go ahead and learn what components we will be adding to that arrangement. For step eight, we're gonna go ahead and add a label within that vertical arrangement. Once we add our label, we're gonna to need to go ahead and change some of its properties. We're gonna go ahead and change the text to read, ask the magic eight ball a question. We'll change the font size to 20 and make it bold. So let's go ahead and take a look at our MIT App Inventor and see how we can make these changes. For step eight, we're gonna go ahead and add a label to our user interface. Now a label is used to display text on the screen. So we're gonna to go to our user interface drawer in our palette window. From here, we're gonna find our label and we're gonna drag that inside of the vertical arrangement. You wanna make sure that if you look in your component window that that label is indented underneath that vertical arrangement. Now, once you have that label placed inside of that arrangement, we're gonna go ahead and change that text from reading text for label one to read, ask the magic eight ball a question. We're gonna go ahead and change that font size from 14 to 20 and we'll go ahead and make that text bold as well. Once you have completed that, it's time to move on to step nine and add our second label. For step nine, we're gonna add a second label within that vertical arrangement. Be sure to place that label underneath the first label that we created. The properties for this label is that we are gonna be changing our text to read the message, touch the magic eight ball to receive your answer. The font size will be set to 16, the font will be bold, and we will change the color of the font to blue. Let's go ahead and take a look at MIT App Inventor on how we would add this label. So just as we've done before, we're gonna go into our palette and use our user interface drawer. We're gonna grab an additional label and drag that into the user interface. Make sure your label is within the vertical arrangement and underneath label one. Here we will see that we now have a label called text for label two. 
we're going to go over to our properties and we're going to change the text for label 2 to now read touch the magic 8 ball to receive your answer. We'll go ahead and change the font size from 14 to 16. We'll make the font bold and then we'll go ahead and change the text color from default to blue as well. Now that you've completed step 9, let's go ahead and look at how we could add non-visible components to our app. For step 10, we're going to go ahead and use a non-visible component. This is a component that will not be seen on the user interface, but can still interact with our blocks or our code. So from the palette drawer, we're going to need to go to the media drawer and select the player component. Now the player component is a multimedia component that plays audio and controls the phone's vibration. So let's go ahead and finish up our user interface by taking a look at how we would do this in MIT App Inventor. In order to add the player component, we're going to need to go to our palette window and we're going to need to find the media drawer. Once you open up your media drawer, you'll see that the fourth component down is called the player. We're going to go ahead and click and drag that player onto the middle of the canvas. Notice that when you drag the player onto the canvas, it places it beneath the tablet. This is because it's a non-visible component and it will not be seen on the display screen. The properties for your player is that you have the ability to loop this, play it only in the foreground, you can add a source file or change the volume. Now we'll be changing the source file within the block view, so no need to change any of the properties at this time. But now we have completed our user interface. So our next lesson will focus on how we can program our app to function and interact with the user interface and the blocks.